The person said, Whenever I've tried to talk to my dad about these kinds of things, it al almost always turns into an argument slash fight. He refuses to believe that he was that bad, but I don't know how else to see it. When I was a small child, I was getting beat up by a grown man over the most minuscule things on a regular basis. And then below that, there was another comment where they came back to add, I love the man, though. Still, he didn't teach me much, but he taught me how to be tough. I think the biggest problem in trying to communicate with emotionally immature people is that they just can't see it from another person's point of view. It, um, it's like a learning disability. Uh, their minds don't work that way. They're pretty stuck in the uh, part of their brain that uh, is very like one track mind. And so if this person was trying to talk to their dad in hopes that they could elicit an empathic and, and perhaps even apologetic response from him, it would be sort of like, you know, handing a kid, uh, you know, a, a copy of Ulysses and asking them to read it when they have a learning disability. I mean, it just their mind doesn't work that way. So this dad figures that he is giving his kid a good lesson. It may have been the way he got his lessons, but he probably feels very justified in what he did, you know, judging from his angry reaction when he was questioned on it by his adult child. And he doesn't think he was that bad, you know, possibly because he got worse from his father. When someone says, I wasn't that bad, I always think, who are you comparing yourself to? And what happened to you that made you feel that this wasn't that bad? Um, of course, uh, many of us love our parents very much. We admire all the things about them that um, made them our heroes when we were growing up, usually. And when they say that he taught me to be tough, I can see that in two ways. You know, I can see it in the sense of he put me through adversity and I had to learn how to survive under those difficult circumstances by maybe becoming uh sort of tougher in the sense of being more stoic or maybe controlling your own emotions so that you don't make the the beating or the spanking worse um <clears throat> so it could be in that sense that yes i i had this difficult situation with this man that was beating me and i learned how to be tough in that sense and that would actually somewhat be explainable um, in the sense that, yes, um, our worst experiences in life usually have something to teach us. But the question I have is, is that what you needed to be taught? In other words, when you were growing up, if your parent was being aggressive with you and maybe even physically hurtful or harmful to you, was that something that you needed to be taught about how to withstand that? Now, maybe if you're going to um, grow up and you're going to do cage fighting for a career, maybe that would do something for you. But that's that skill of learning how to put up with a with a physically um, hurtful parent. I don't quite see how that pays off later on. Now, on the other hand, it could be that he taught this person how to be tough in that he taught them how not to let their feelings get the best of them. Uh, and I say that because so often when children 
get really upset and they really cry. They really become distraught when their parent spanks them or hits them or does something physical like that. It lots of times incenses the parent. They get very upset with that. Uh, that's where the you know expressions, I'll give you something to cry about or you know, why are you crying or don't be a baby come from because it's upsetting to the parent to be confronted with the evidence that they have hurt their child. That is, weirdly enough, a form of emotional intimacy where the parent hits the child, the child responds with an honest emotional reaction of being distraught and in pain. And that honest, authentic, emotional response triggers that thing in the emotionally immature parent where they can't stand to be around that kind of intimacy. They can't stand that kind of real feeling. And they react to it very defensively. So it's possible that this person learned to be tough in the sense that they learned to hold their emotions in or not to show it when something was getting to them. Okay, I could see how that could be useful in some situations. But the problem is that oftentimes those lessons go deeper than that, and they go into a person's model of how to do relationships. And so the person not only is tough when they're, uh, you know, in, in dire circumstances like they need to be, but they stay tough and they stay defended even in their closest relationships after they grow up. So, you know, that's a potential downside. Um, but that's a very common kind of outcome when you appeal to the parent to have empathy for your situation as a child. Yeah, the, the parent just, their defenses won't allow them to go there because it would probably make them feel really bad. And it would also lead them into an emotionally intimate moment with their adult child, and usually they're not having that. Uh, I see it all the time just in my comments, so I, I assume you see it endlessly. This idea of my parent was, and then a story that, that you know, is horrific, but I still love them, dot, 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 but I still love them. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's actually love, like that the person... Uh, if they could kind of zoom out and be completely authentic, that, that that's what they are actually feeling. I think children are made uh, to love their parents. I think it's their very nature. So whether or not that person loves their parent in the same sense that they love their partner or that they love their children, I don't know about that because those are very different kinds of relationships. But Oh, and, and I would also say that you could parse it and say, well, there's love and then there's family bonds. You know, like a bond is formed by familiarity and proximity, according to Bowlby, the, the attachment researcher. And that bond is very powerful and it can stay there in a very strong form, even when the person consciously dislikes or even hates their parent. They can still feel that family bond. But what I've learned is that this relationship with an emotionally immature parent is so complicated. It's so deep and it's got so many layers of conflicting feelings. But my experience has been that what makes therapy so difficult is that there is love there, that they do really feel this uh, affectionate attachment to their parent. Now, not in every case, of course, because there are, uh, you know, naturally many kinds of parent-child relationships that are really not based on love or not what we would, you know, define as love. But I think a lot of people underneath all the uh, trauma even, they really do long to be close to their parents. They really do care about their parents. It really does matter to them what their parents think of them. 
And I, I just think that's part of the complication. Um, yeah, I, and to me, that, that poignant dilemma of I love this person and I'm furious at this person or I can't stand to be around this person, that dilemma, when you face that in therapy and you allow yourself to work through that mourning, that grieving that has to happen, when you feel both of those things together, that's where I've seen people really make strides in their own individuation in becoming their own person. Because if you deny or uh, try to suppress feelings of love for the parent, even if it doesn't make any sense, you know, even if you're embarrassed that you still love them, but if you try to suppress that, it's like you never you never really find your true self and you never really get free of their influence because you're always fighting that or denying that. So I always in therapy look for those feelings to be brought out just as much as the anger or the disappointment or the frustration. Because in most cases, Will, I've seen it be there and that the person has benefited from admitting it as part of the very, very complicated emotional picture with these kinds of parents.